New 13 billion powerful U.S. aircraft carrier While Russia is shocked by the loss of its flagship cruiser Moscow in the U.S. without much hype, launched the most expensive aircraft carrier in the world, Gerald R. Ford. The Gerald R. Ford is the first Ford-class aircraft carrier to replace the existing Nimitz-class aircraft carriers. The aircraft carrier is designed with a new radar system, dual-band radar, a new electromagnetically-powered catapult launcher and weapons elevator, a new aerodynamic braking device and other technologies, which we will discuss in this video. To begin with, it cost the U.S. $13.3 billion to build the aircraft carrier, making it one of the most expensive, if not the most expensive ships ever built. A combined active electronically scanned research and tracking radar system is another addition to the Gerald R. Ford class. Raytheon was developing the dual-band radar or DBR for the Zumwalt class guided missile destroyers as well as the Gerald Air Ford class aircraft carriers. Six to ten radar antennas can be replaced with a single six-faced radar to reduce the island size. The DBR is made up of three-faced arrays of X-band and SPY three multifunction radar and S-band volume search radar or VSR emitters. To save money, the Zumwalt destroyer's S-band radar was eventually removed. The ship holds more than 4,500 military personnel and 90 aircraft. The displacement of the ship is 100,000 tons, length 332.8 meters, width 40.8 meters, waterline and 78 meters flight deck. The maximum speed of the aircraft carrier is 30 knots. Thanks to the new reactors, calculated in a specific way, the nuclear fuel is enough for at least 50 years of service. Along with this, this increases the safety of ship operations since all radioactive materials from the moment of loading until the aircraft carrier decommissioning will be in a sealed volume. The nuclear-powered multi-purpose aircraft carrier has advanced combat control systems, nuclear propulsion system, and electric power system, and has a larger takeoff and landing deck, which will increase the number of sorties by 25% and make it almost independent of weather conditions. The more powerful propulsion system enabled the aircraft carrier Gerald Air Ford to be equipped with EMALS electromagnetic catapults. With the help of new catapults, the aircraft carrier will be able to provide a normal intensity of aviation flights at the level of 160 sorties per day. For comparison, modern aircraft carriers like Nimitz can provide only 120 sorties per day. If necessary, the promising aircraft carrier will be able to raise the intensity of flights up to 220 sorties per day. According to the official data, the new aircraft carrier will be able to transport and provide operation of more than 75 aircraft of several types. Initially, the main strike force of the aircraft carrier Gerald L. Ford will be FA-18EF Super Hornet aircraft. Over time, they'll be joined and then replaced by the latest F-35C, the composition of long-range radar detection, electronic warfare aircraft, as well as helicopters for various purposes, will remain the same. Besides, several types of unmanned aerial vehicles are supposed to be placed on the new aircraft carrier. The aircraft carrier Gerald R. Ford will be equipped with RIM-116 RAM and RIM-162 ESSM anti-aircraft missile systems for the ship's air and missile defense. Such weaponry will enable the ship to intercept dangerous targets at ranges up to 50 kilometers. In addition, to protect against threats in the close-in zone, several anti-aircraft artillery systems will be installed on the aircraft carrier. Two new reactors developed for the aircraft carrier are capable of generating 25% more power than the power plant of the previous generation aircraft carrier. The extra power allows the ship to reload catapults and launch aircraft faster. The CVN-78's launch system is only one part of the problem. The ship features a modified and relocated island, the area of the carrier where air traffic control and the bridge are housed. Three quicker and more powerful elevators compared to four on Nimitz-class carriers, an advanced aircraft recovery system, or ARS, and flight deck design improvements. These adjustments are necessary to increase the number of sorties launched. With the addition of an integrative active electronically scan array, or ASA, search and tracking radar system, the carrier's sensory array has been upgraded. Because this innovative system has no moving parts, it requires less maintenance and manpower to operate. Furthermore, Gerald Ford was the first ship in the new class of multi-purpose nuclear-powered U.S. aircraft carriers and is named for the 38th president of the 
United States, who died in 2006. He served aboard the aircraft carrier Monterey during World War II and left the Navy with the rank of lieutenant commander. Aircraft carriers are designed to have better trajectories for moving weapons largely eliminating horizontal movements within the ship. Moving weapons from storage and assembly to aircraft on the flight deck has also been simplified and accelerated. Ammunition is delivered to a centralized rear armament location using heavy-duty weapon elevators. These elevators are positioned so that ammunition doesn't have to cross any aircraft traffic areas, thereby reducing relocation problems in hangars and on the flight deck. Defense systems such as free electron-directed energy laser weapons, electrical armor, and tracking systems will require more power. It's estimated that CVN-78 needs only half the power generation capacity to run currently planned systems, including EMOS. Thus, aircraft carriers of the Gerald R-4 type have a power reserve that the Nimitz type lacks to run lasers in electrical armor. The passive defense system has two plates that are electrically charged differently and a few centimeters apart. A large amount of energy is stored with the capacitors. The resulting chemical processes affect the warhead, thus reducing the effect of such weapons. The Gerald R-4 type aircraft carriers have two MK-49 surface-to-air missile launchers, each loaded with 21 RIM 11-6A missiles. In addition, the ships are equipped with two MK-29 8-carrier launchers armed with RIM-162 ESSM missiles. These weapons are designed to counter fast and maneuverable anti-ship missiles. The RIM-116A missiles are designed to hit targets within 10 kilometers. The RIM-162 ESSM missiles to attack at ranges up to 50 kilometers. The anti-aircraft weapon system consists of two 2x6, 20mm, 76 Phalanx Mac 15 Block 2 SAMs designed to counter subsonic speed anti-ship missiles, five 12.7mm 90M2 BMG large caliber machine guns are installed for close-in defense. The design uses the new EMOS catapult, which required electrical, wiring, and other changes inside the ship. In addition, the installation and testing of the improved AAG landing system also required many additional design changes. As a result of the government's decision to incorporate improvements during construction into the ship's combat systems, a total of about 19,000 changes were found to be necessary. The ship's crew totaled 4,539 is to 2,600 crew members, including 508 officers, about 2,500 aircrew, and 70 staff commanders. Automation of many processes has reduced the crew to 2,600. Gerald R-4 type aircraft carriers have an onboard hospital that includes a full laboratory pharmacy, operating room, three-bed intensive care unit, two-bed emergency room, and a 41-bed hospital ward with 11 medical personnel and 30 paramedics. Gerald Ford was the first U.S. Navy ship designed entirely in a 3D design system implemented by Northrop Grumman that includes an automated process modeling system. The ships are also equipped with jamming and anti-torpedo systems. Eight 130mm MK-36 SRBOC launchers are used to defend against homing anti-ship missiles that emit infrared jammers and spray a veil of dipole deflectors. The SLX-1 active anti-torpedo defense system is also on board. The ship's company on Gerald R-4 class carriers has been reduced to 2,600 sailors, about 700 less than on Nimitz class carriers, thanks to systems that minimize crew workload. On Gerald R-4 class carriers, the huge 180-man berthing facilities are replaced by 40 rack berthing areas. The smaller berths are calmer, and the layout necessitates less walking through other areas. Areas. Racks are typically three high, with one locker per individual. There are no contemporary setup racks with extra headroom in the berthing. The bottom and middle racks can only fit the sailor lying down. Each berthing has an accompanying head, which includes showers, vacuum powered septic system toilets, no urinals because the berthing are gender neutral, and sinks. Wi Fi enabled lounges are positioned across the passageway from the berthing racks in separate spaces. The waste system plumbing has been a concern for the first two carriers of the class since deployment. Because the pipes were too small to manage the volume of users, the vacuum system failed, resulting in blocked toilets. To solve the problem, the sewage system was flushed with specific acetic cleaning chemicals. According to the GAO, these cleaning treatments cost around $400,000 each time, resulting in a significant, unanticipated rise in the lifetime operating costs of these ships. These cleanings will be required throughout the ship's lifespan. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and stay tuned.